Hello, my name is Alexander Strauch. For the past 43 years, I've served here at the Littleton Bible Chapel. It has been a wonderful church experience. A good church experience is like a good marriage experience. Very enjoyable. One reason I believe for this enjoyment has been that I've served together with a great group of pastor elders. I have never felt alone. Now this doesn't mean we don't have our problems or our heartaches. Like any church, we have many of those. But I can say to you that each of the elders has tried, by the grace of God, to follow those marvelous principles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Humility of mind, servanthood, love for one another, forgiveness, and most importantly, love one another as Christ has loved us. All have worked for the unity of the church so that the power of the gospel would be seen. But far more important than my experience here is what the Word of God says about the church and those who lead it. This is a short introductory message to introduce our first section of the Biblical Eldership website. In this section of our website, we introduce what is a Biblical Eldership and why is it important. Let's begin by looking at what the great apostles Paul and Peter say about the elders of the church. It's what they say that's important. In Acts chapter 20, verse 28, as Paul is saying farewell to the Ephesian elders, we read these words. Be on guard for yourselves and for all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Those are the words of the Apostle Paul to the Ephesian elders just as he was leaving them. And then the Apostle Peter also says this, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, I exhort the elders among you, shepherd the flock of God among you, exercising oversight. I want you to notice that these two great apostles, both of them assign the elders, no one else, the job of pastoring, shepherding the local church. They both use the shepherding imagery of the shepherd and the sheep. This means that the job of the elders is to shepherd the church. As shepherds, there's a fourfold aspect to their ministry. If you're a shepherd, you have to feed the flock, you have to protect the flock, and you have to lead the flock, and then the healing, the practical side of the ministry. It's interesting as we look at our New Testament and we look at the qualifications for an elder, what is emphasized is that an elder must be able to teach the word. If we look at the qualification in Titus chapter 1, verse 9, we see how important it is that elders can teach and they know the Bible and they know Christian doctrine. Listen to what the apostle says about elder qualifications. Titus 1.9, holding fast the faithful word which is in accordance with the teaching. In other words, the apostolic teaching. Notice the twofold duty. So that he, the elder, may be able both to exhort in sound doctrine and to refute those who contradict. In other words, to be a pastoral elder, to be a biblical elder, you must know the Word of God, sound doctrine, and you must be able to spot false teachers. And then in 1 Timothy chapter 5, we read these words that some elders, not all elders, actually labor in preaching and teaching. Listen to what the Scripture says about the elders. The elders who rule well are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and in teaching. For the scripture says you shall not muzzle the ox while he is threshing, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. So one of the main requirements of a biblical elder is that he can open the word of God and teach it and instruct people, and he can spot false teachers. This is one of the difference between a board elder and a true pastor elder. Secondly, they have to be able to protect the church. In fact, in Paul's last words to the Ephesian elders, he basically says, shepherd the church, but then he emphasizes the protecting ministry. He basically says, protect the church. Wolves are coming. It's your job to guard the sheep. And so it's a major aspect of biblical eldership to be able to protect the church from wolves, from false teachers. And then there is the leading ministry. And that is casting vision, handling problems, organizing things, motivating people, leading the congregation into the future. And then there is the whole area of the healing ministry. This is the dealing with the sick, 
helping the bereaved, strengthening the weak, marriages, premarital counseling, counseling family problems. For example, James says in James 5, 14 and 15, if anyone's sick, call for the elders of the church and they will come and pray, which tells us that elders ought to be men of faith and prayer. Now, in biblical terminology, it is the elders who shepherd the church, oversee the church, they lead the church, they direct the affairs of the church. This is a biblical eldership. And then in both Titus and in 1 Timothy, there is an enormous emphasis on qualifications. The elders who serve must be qualified according to the biblical standards. And this is to protect the church from unfit, unqualified people. Now, why is this important? Let me give you several reasons. Number one, God's Word teaches pastoral eldership. The fact that the scriptures teach this should alert us to something important. God wants only the best for His church. He knows our needs better than we do. Again and again, we see problems in the church because we do not follow the scriptures and we allow human tradition to be our guide. Let me read to you a wonderful quotation by the very famous French historian, Amiral Daubigny. Listen to what he says. This is a marvelous quotation. As we advance through the centuries, light and life begin to decrease in the church. Why? Because the torch of the scripture begins to grow dim and because the deceitful light of human authorities begin to replace it. I hope you will see that we have built this website in our teaching on careful interpretation of the scriptures. So, this is a biblical doctrine and the Bible teaches it. That's why it's important. Biblical eldership also promotes the true nature of the New Testament church. Now, in any leadership structure, it should harmonize with and it should promote the nature of the organization. The church is not a corporation. It's not a military. It's not a government. The church is the family of God. It's the household of God. It's a worldwide brotherhood and sisterhood. In this organization, the Spirit of God indwells every member. Every member is a priest to God, gifted of God, a saint to God. Christ is present whenever we meet through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so the organization of the church should harmonize with and promote this nature. I believe the eldership structure of government harmonizes with and promotes the true nature of the church of Jesus Christ. Third, biblical eldership provides the leaders of the church with genuine accountability. The more we believe what the Bible says about man's sin, the deceitfulness of sin, the more we realize that leaders need true, genuine accountability. In fact, biblical eldership gives a formal structure of accountability. The more we believe our Bibles of the deceitfulness of sin, we realize that leaders need real accountability. Also, all of us are lazy, at heart, we forget, we don't follow through with our responsibilities. In eldership, you have an accountability relationship to make sure that we carry through with what we say we're going to do. Biblical eldership also provides true peer relationships. It's very interesting to note that the Lord Jesus Christ never trained any man alone. He trained men as a group and expected them to minister as a group. One of the most wonderful things about biblical eldership is that you have colleagues. You know, in peer relationships, we balance one another, we sharpen one another, we also comfort one another and strengthen one another. It's a wonderful thing to have colleagues and peers in the work of God. My fellow colleagues have sharpened me, they've improved my character, my own leadership skills. Peer relationships are so important. They're so healthy to the Christian life. Finally, Biblical eldership provides more balanced care for the church. I believe, if it is properly understood, a team of spirit-moved, qualified elders will do a better job in caring for the church. We have provided for you this short 47-page summary of what biblical eldership is. You'll find this very interesting, and you will find it a scriptural presentation. You can download this free on our website, or if you want multiple copies, you can order it at your bookstore or online for other people. I hope you'll come back. We'll be adding material to this website constantly. We are praying that God will use this to make elders more effective in their pastoral ministry. God bless you.